Hello and welcome. In today's tutorial, I wanted to show you guys how to paint hairdos. This past weekend, we created this painting together, The Three Sisters, and in it, we covered how to paint hair from behind in acrylic. We went over a bunch of different colors, textures, and styles together, and I know a lot of you really enjoyed the hair portion of this class. So today, I'm going to do an in-depth look at hair we're going to cover a few of these styles in a little bit more detail. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using the following colors. Titanium white, carbon black, burnt umber brown, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, as well as some warm medium yellow. For brushes, grab your smallest brushes that you have in your collection. I have a quarter inch flat brush and a really tiny round brush and then a few different small and medium sizes of flat and round. We're going to paint all of our types of hair today using a mid-tone, a shadow, and a highlight color. I like to begin by placing the mid-tone. Think of the mid-tone of a person's hair like the general color that you see when you look at it. So let's create a row of some different styles. And I'm going to do a big curly do. Okay, so we're kind of doing that perspective of looking at the back of their head. Now some hair ends in a point and some hair ends straight across. So everyone will have a different shape to the bottom of their hair. Let's do a nice dark, dark chocolatey brown hair next. And we'll do this more like a wavy hair that ends flat at the ends. They're going to be some long styles, so we're just going to pull on a base coat. When I pull on the base coat, it's important to pull in the direction that hair flows, which is really long. So this would be, say, for someone that had chestnut brown hair. You can maybe pull some little tendrils, you know, clumps of hair, little curls at the end. So this is just a basic shape to start. Now let's do a bit of a warmer brown. So I'm going to get some brown. And another thing I want you to think about when painting hair is all hair has an undertone to it. Hair typically goes either golden or red when light shines on it, with the exception of black hair, which can also take a very, um, almost like a blue shine to it. But all of the hairs in the brunette and blonde spectrum will shine either red, auburn, or warm golden undertone. So for making some lighter browns, we can tint them either with the red or the yellow. So let's make a lighter brown. This is going to be our mid-tone color, not our darkest color, not our lightest color, the middle color. So I'm making some middle browns. Now I'm going to warm one of these up so it's kind of more of a golden honey brown. For umber, it's already a pretty reddish brown. I might add just a little bit of red. I'm using magenta today. A little bit of magenta. So this brown has more of those kind of auburny undertones. A little yellow, a little more red. Okay. And for this golden brown color, I'm going to do a bit of a shorter blunt hairstyle almost straight across. For my chestnut brown wavy hair, we use this plain dark brown. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to it to make a shadow color. I want my shadow color to be a little bit darker than the main hair color. And I want to carve out some wavy forms in this, this hairstyle. So here's the crown of the head. I'm going to do kind of like a wavy clump. Another wave. 
And it's always helpful to have a bit of a reference photo. So I'm coming in and out with these wavy shapes here. I know it's a little hard to see because we're going dark on dark, but I'm just waving in and out. And here's where we're going to start really defining a bit of the edges of our hair. This is a dark brown. Okay, so getting some shape to the waves. So long S curves for those waves. So I'm gonna take some of this burnt umber. I wanna make sure my color is shade darker. And we can do another wave here. So I'm not painting individual strands. I'm just creating almost like clumps of hair here. Coming in and out. In and out. You know, here we can loosen up a few tendrils, pull out some waves onto the outside of the hair so it's not totally flat. No, and you might want to have a little strand or two kind of loosening up around the side. But what I'm not doing is painting just individual strands. Right now we're kind of creating the texture and mostly like clumps of hair. Here is our more kind of golden brown color. So once again, I'm going to add a little bit of brown. This is that shadow color that's going to kind of define the texture of the hair. So brown, that's a little bit more on the yellowy side. So I'm going to do a really loose curvy line here. Create some wavy texture. Now in your corkscrew style curls, since we started with black as a base, I want to add a little bit of a chestnut brown for our mid-tone. Now with black hair, you can start with brown and then add black. Or you can start with black and add brown. But depending on the way the hair gleams in the sun, is going to really indicate the color you use to define your corkscrew curls. So if your subject has kind of warm browns shining through, more of a kind of ashy, almost blue color shining through, gold or auburn, all of these colors can shine through. We're going to follow the texture of the corkscrew curls. So little brush and then little wiggles. Side to side. You can use some of your plain burnt number two. So we're going to start pulling the texture into our curls. And I'm going to go back into some of my original color, that black color, and I'm going to pull some loose curls coming out of the side. Now for this, I want to just go side to side. So I'm not looping, I'm kinking. And this really helps show the pattern and texture of the hair that we're creating.
So getting some texture in there, and that will show up a little better after it dries. So let's continue on with our highlights. It's time to add a highlight color into our hair. Add some weight to your mid-tone. It doesn't have to be drastic. So I'm going to start pulling some strands down. I'm going to start pulling some strands down. And here's my mid-tone shadow color. So this hair is almost like twisting down the head. And then it's coming kind of like back out this way. So see how I made it almost curl in there? So within the mid, this clump of hair, the hairs are going to come down and curl under. So you can pick up on some of the highlight sections. So maybe you've got some hair swooping down the head here. And again, well, she's curled it up, so then it's coming down. You can flip it up this way. You can pull a little shadow under this curl to accentuate it. So here, pulling some highlights and then pulling them down again in clumps, not like totally individual strands. So if the hair is waving in, and the light's going to hit it there. Here. So I'm leaving some of the shadows shine through, and I'm just plucking out some of the tops of those bumps in the curls. Where the curls bump out is a good time. But follow the strands. There's maybe a little strand coming down the side of the hair here. And once you pull it in, you know, think about following the hair out, then maybe it's flipping over this way. And that little strand could just be one of those loose strands that's kind of falling more in front of the face. And once you've got it all blocked in like this, And I made those ends a little flippy. You can come back in and add more shadows or more highlights to really bring it up. So you can shadow the underside of the curl or a few streaks down the main clump to, to break it up. So that's some fun flippy hair. And you can go for an even brighter highlight color by adding a little more white and then coming in again where you put some highlights. Less is more for the really bright highlights. Okay, so shadows, mid-tones, and then highlights. Now let's do our other hair colors in the same way. We may have tighter curls, we may have looser curls, but we're gonna keep working them up. Shadow, mid-tone, highlight. So our reddish brown, so I wanna add a reddish brown highlight here and pop out some of these waves. Okay, so these waves are almost more like this than actually curled around. So I'm just going to kind of pull some highlights and following the shapes of these bumps that we already created when we made our waves earlier. Now oftentimes, because the top of our head is closest to the light source, the sun or the <clears throat> fake lights inside, we're gonna get a lot of light at the top of our head here. But also, you know, if I've got a bump jutting out, like that's gonna kind of create the look of light 
hitting the top bump of the curl that protrudes. So I'm just going to do these kind of round shapes following what I've got. So I find with hair, you can just keep playing with it and playing with it. Once again, I've got these dark lines. I'm going to come through with some medium brown. So starting to build up that rich chestnut hair. And we can add some lighter highlights into our tight curls. Let's continue to build up some different types of styles using different colors for our midtones. So here I've created mid-tones for a bunch more different styles and colors. We've got some different blondes, some reds, some silver, a couple fashion colors. We've got a shorter style, an ombre style. We've got some side buns, a messy bun, and then a long French braid. We're going to do the same thing that we did above. We're going to block in shadows to shape up the texture of these dews. So far we've mostly done waves and really, really tight curls. For straight hair, there's almost always a highlight across the top and midsection of the hair. So when I pull in the shadows, I'm gonna come straight down the head and then we can block in the highlights where the light naturally falls across the hair. So just creating long, straight texture it's going to be the same for our gray hair. Some long texture following the shape of the head. So cascading down from the crown. You can pull out a few loose hairs at any time to really make the style look a bit more natural. Now for the braid, for our braid, we're going to carve out, we kind of pull down the long shape of the braid. We want to carve out almost these little V shapes into it.
then some strands down the head where the hair is pulling in to the braid itself. For my ombre hair, I really want that look of having almost like a black kind of root at the top here. So I'm going to pull in the shadow color and I'm going to add a little bit more of it to the top. So still kind of blocking out my section. So created that two tone coming down. And then as I create some of these sections coming down. I'm just going to add a lot more of it into the top of the hair. And if you really want to make the effect a little more drastic, you can even have a lighter shadow color as you come down. So here I have kind of a bun, a bun situation. So I like to pull some highlights where the buns are coming to the side of the head. Give a little shadow color around the base of the bun to help pull, pull it out because they're 3D, 3D objects, hair objects. And this is a really curly bun, so I'm going to add some texture in here. Curly bun, curly bun. And here we've got kind of a straight hair button. So when we add our shadow color, we want to be mindful and have a Kind of dark center in the bun. I want to make sure we've got a dark center in the bun. And a little shading around the base of the bun. And we're going to have lines kind of flowing. The bun's pulled into a donut, so flowing into the center. It is time to highlight up our heads. The highlighting is the magical part that really, really helps pop things out. When highlighting straight hair, because the light isn't being bounced around by the shadows in a wave, it really does reflect almost flat across, ever so slightly following the curvature of the head. And there's almost always a fairly bright highlight towards the top of the hair. So I'm going to kind of come straight across in a band with my highlight color. Okay, and I've got almost this white wand here. And then a few strands coming down, maybe another highlight halfway through the hair.
So this time I pulled a few highlights in the silver all the way through and I'm going to use some almost white to do that main highlight that comes across almost like a band. So we could do the same thing with some of the hair up here. We could add another even brighter highlight. So my auburn hair, if I came in with some, you know, even almost whitish, orangey brown. I always find adding highlights is the funnest part of doing hair because those last few little bright white or light brunette, red chestnut bits can really accentuate the texture and shape. At the very end of your hair painting, making sure you've got a few little loose tendrils or, you know, flipping out and modifying the edges can also really help define your hair's texture. So I'm just adding a few little curls out at the bottom of this pink hair, which has gotten quite wild and flippy. You know, I pulled a few little wispies into the bun. Okay. And that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting some of these hairstyles with me today, and maybe they've given you a few ideas that you can apply to your own painting projects. That's it for me, everyone. Take care. Bye.